Okay, I have been pretty pumped for this keynote. It was kind of a little bit of a letdown in some regards, but there's still some things to talk about, so let's do it. So the first thing Apple talked about was the iPads. It's actually pretty interesting on this side of things. So Apple have updated the standard baseline iPad. You now have 64 gigabytes of storage. You have pretty much the same form factor, that 10.2 inch screen with the bezels, the home button, all of that jazz. The only real difference is the internal. So they've refreshed this. They've now got the A13 Bionic. So you're gonna get a more powerful iPad for the price. Still prices in at 329, which is extremely good. So if you do want a good tablet that's very premium and you're not gonna have any problems with, you're gonna have future proofing with Apple's updates, then this is definitely the tablet you're gonna wanna get, especially if you don't wanna spend too much money. But something new and interesting is Apple updated the iPad mini. So it's basically like a baby iPad Air, but it's got a more powerful chip. So you now have the new A15 Bionic chip inside which technically makes it more powerful than the Air. So I'm presuming there's gonna be some sort of refresh for the Air, but we're gonna to have to wait and see. But something that makes this iPad really cool is you can hold it in one hand and it's just very small and portable. The screen is about 8.3 inches in size, which makes it big enough to use as a tablet, quite nice to sort of watch content on, but small enough to the point where you can kind of bring it round easily. You don't need to lug around this huge big thing it's a nice form factor. I actually really do like the form factor and it's obviously got the same design as the Air. So you don't have 120 hertz like on the Pro models, you only have 60 hertz. But to be honest, it's not gonna be much of a big deal for most people I'm assuming. I personally can tell the difference and much prefer using 120 hertz. But for the price point, the size, it's still pretty good even though it's 60 hertz. So if it's not much of a big deal for you, you might wanna actually pick up this mini over the baseline one I mentioned before. Now, since this isn't a pro iPad, you don't have face ID, you have touch ID inside the lock button. And on the back, you have a standard 12 megapixel camera. Now on the front, you actually have a new ultra wide camera and you also have this on the baseline iPad. This allows you to get center stage. So basically whenever you move around the room, it's gonna track you digitally and keep you in frame. So if you're in like a video call or something, this is gonna be absolutely excellent. But super happy to see USB-C is also come to the iPad mini. So now really there's not a lot of lightning out there other than the iPhone and the baseline iPad. So it's nice to see Apple moving over to USB-C. And now we're gonna be talking about the Apple Watch. So this is drastically different to what people showed online. Like I was looking at rumors every day everyone was convinced it was gonna be like the iPhone 12 or iPhone 13. It's gonna be these flat edges and it's gonna be kind of more boxy. And then when they released it, it just wasn't. It was just basically like the Series 6, but it now has a larger screen. So the screen now wraps a bit over the curves of the glass and you're gonna get a much smaller bezel. So it's a 40% bezel reduction on this screen, which means it's gonna give you some extra space on the screen to view things. However, there is glare around the edge. Like I have an Apple Watch here and there's glare right round where the screen expands. So I'm not too sure how useful that will actually be. We'll just have to wait and see. But from what Apple have mentioned, it's the same body basically, the same metal frame. You got the same digital crown, the same buttons, the same chip there's really not much new apart from that new screen, which Apple was really trying to push into our faces. So if you're not really into that larger display, then Series 6 is pretty good still. The only real benefit you have is you now have faster charging. So it's 33% faster to charge your Series 7 than your Series 6. And not only is the screen larger, but it's also brighter and it's actually gonna be stronger. So you've now got this new ceramic hardened glass and it's gonna be much more durable. I haven't really found this to be too great against scratches. I have quite a few scuffs on here, which is kind of disappointing. So hopefully the Series 7 is a lot better in that regard. Other than that, as I said, it's pretty much the same. The straps are compatible with past generation. Not too much difference. Okay, so now the thing everyone's actually waiting to talk about, iPhone 13. So from what we saw, it's pretty much quite similar in terms of the design from the iPhone 12. You still have that boxy look with the stainless steel bezels on the Pro model, the aluminium bezels on the regular model with that sort of glass back. And the camera setup has changed a little bit. On the regular 13, you now have this diagonal camera placement, but the overall bumps on both these models are larger. So we've got larger camera bumps yet again. But basically the only real upgrades are the chip, the cameras, and the display. So the notch is actually being reduced by 20% in size. So it does give you a little bit more screen real estate. However, you don't really use the screen real estate up by the notch. It's really only used for displaying your signal, maybe the time, 
So you're really not gonna get any benefits from this unless Apple allow you to view the battery percentage. Now, you're not only getting a slight bit more screen real estate, you're also getting brighter screens. iPhone 13 is now a thousand nits and iPhone 13 Pro is 1,200 nits. So you're getting a much brighter display which you're gonna be able to see outdoors in strong, harsh sunlight. And on the Pro models, we now finally have 120 Hertz. So I had the S20 Ultra, which had 120 Hertz back a year ago or so, switched over to iPhone 12, 60 Hertz. So that's kind of a bummer, especially when you paid for the Pro model and you've only got 60 Hertz. So 120 is a huge difference. Like a lot of people say they don't see it, but to me side by side, it's like a no brainer. 120 Hertz is significantly better. Now, every other area of the new iPhones, I really don't see much difference to the 12 Pro. So it's gonna be difficult for me deciding whether I should upgrade or not, whether that 120 Hertz is really worth an entire phone upgrade. We'll just have to wait and see, but let me know your thoughts down below. I'm super curious. But it's kind of unfortunate that the 120 Hertz is only on the Pro model. So if you just get a regular iPhone 13, you're still gonna have 60 Hertz, which just seems like, like why? Like why not just put 120? I guess they're trying to market the Pro phones more. So it makes sense. But come on, Apple, really? Maybe next year we'll finally have 120 in the standard iPhone model. Now, we're all wondering the same thing. Higher frame rate, what's the battery gonna be like? And well, Apple actually states that you're gonna get one and a half to two and a half times better battery life than on the past models, which is actually impressive. So they've basically bumped up the battery size a small amount. The phone's actually a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier than before but something that makes a really big difference is taken over from the Apple Watch and it's the variable refresh rate. So now it will actually change refresh rate depending on what you're doing. So if you're simply just looking at your display, it's gonna be 10 Hertz. If you're watching a video, it's gonna be 30 Hertz or 60 Hertz. And then once you actually start to scroll and move around on the OS, it's gonna be 120 Hertz. So this is gonna drastically reduce power and overall it's just super efficient. And obviously it's a very Apple thing to do to conserve all your resources and not need to increase the battery size by too much. So I'm definitely all for that. As long as we don't really see the transition, then it's not much of a big deal. So on the iPhone 13 and 13 mini, you now have larger sensors. You still have 12 megapixel ones, but they are larger. So you're gonna get more light in, more information. You're gonna get better low lights. And you also have a larger aperture as well. So you're gonna get better depth of field. Something really nice is the main camera on these iPhone 13s have sensor shifts. So it basically means the sensor moves around to compensate shake from your phone and allows for better stabilization. So in terms of the 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max, you're gonna have a very similar camera placement to last year. Really the only upgrades are inside. So you now have larger sensors again, like on the 13. You also have an even larger aperture. So you're gonna get a lot of depth of field. And some of the cool improvements are actually software. So you're getting new cinematic video mode, which allows you to change focus on people's faces, which is kind of cool. But looking at it in Apple's demo, it didn't look the best. It was a little bit jittery. So we'll have to see if Apple polishes it up a little bit. And then you also have three times telephoto and the wide angle now actually allows you to take macro photos. So if you're within two centimeters, you can take a photo in focus, which will be a macro picture, which is kind of cool. You can now also shoot night mode on all three different camera lenses, which is nice to see. And you can also shoot ProRes if you have a pro iPhone, but you can only shoot ProRes 4K if you have an iPhone that has storage of 256 or above. So if you have a 128 gigabyte iPhone 13 Pro, you can only record ProRes at 1080p, which kind of sucks. I don't really know why Apple did this, whether it was something to do with the storage or the speeds, but they've done it. So unfortunately, that's just the case. If you wanna record ProRes at 4K, you're gonna to have to step up your storage. But inside all of these new devices, you now have the new A15 Bionic chip, which is obviously way more powerful and more efficient. It's got a five core GPU for the Pro models, four core for the regular 13 models. And in terms of pricing, it's kind of steep, but it's pretty much the same as last year. And honestly, comparing it to some other Samsung devices like the S21 Ultra, this is actually slightly cheaper. So the mini's pricing in at $699, regular 13 is $799, and then once you go over to the Pro models, starting in at $999, going up to $1099 on the Pro Max. And obviously, if you upgrade the storage, you're gonna be paying more on top of that. So if you max out the storage option, which is one terabyte, you will actually be paying about $1,500, which is just so freaking insane on a phone. Now, in terms of what I think about this whole event, 
I like the iPad mini, think that's pretty cool. Series seven is not the biggest update. I'd probably rather wait for a series eight. And in terms of the iPhone, I like it. It's a nice addition, like a nice upgrade, but I don't think it's a whole step up. So it's not really a massive leap from the 12. It's more like a 12S where they've made the notch a tiny bit smaller and you've got a better camera. Really, apart from that and the 120 hertz on the Pro models, there's not too much difference. And so it's really gonna be hard for me deciding whether this is actually worth upgrading. But let me know your thoughts down below. I'm super interested and I can't wait to actually get my hands on the new iPhone to try it out for myself. So see you guys later. Hopefully you enjoyed. Peace.